Well, I just want to say, before anything starts, that how excited I am to be here tonight with all of you. And, uh, and uh, you know, Big Joy is not just about a movie, it's about a movement. It's about finding your, learning how to follow your weird, which is James Brown's uh, advice to filmmakers. He said, don't make the film anyone else can make, make the film only you can make. Or likewise, live the life only you can make. So we decided tonight, it's not just going to be a screening. There are a few extra magical things. The movie's not too long, so we added a few extra things at the beginning. The first going to be able to hear the fantastic music from Ken Jacobson. And then other surprises, I don't even know what they all are, uh, will happen. And then I'll come back and introduce the movie. But I just want to say thanks to Ken for being here. Thanks to all of you for being here. 9.30 on a Friday, the first Friday of uh, 2014. Auspicious time for us. So thank you again. one more piece. I should know that, but keep playing. Anyway, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. What a joy-filled night this is. It's a delight to see such a big crowd on a winter's night. Happy New Year. I'm Leslie from Bashan Film Society, and the funny thing is, you're Bashan Film Society too. Just by coming and filling up this theater tonight and coming to our first Friday Art Films, which we've been doing for about a year and a half now, it's our pleasure to present uh, one-time screenings of films that just won't quite fill the theater for an entire week or three weeks a month, sadly. Uh, but tonight's going to be very special, uh, unforgettable. There are, of course, upcoming performances before the, the main event, the film. Um, so glad you are here. I would like to bring up first our speakers. There they are. Come on down. Bill Wood. There are, yeah. And Jean Dory. Oh, can't see. Come on up. <laughs> The bright light. Hi there. Um, we have been asked to do a poem. By James Broughton. Yes. Yeah. It's called This Wonder, A Hymn to Herm. And when you've seen the movie, 
you'll know who Herm is. This wonder. This wonder. This prize. This surprise. This secret. This skyrocket. This wonder. Your wonder. My wonder. Our wonder. My steering gear. My takeoff. My sword. My songbird. My bird in hand. My flying carpet. Your wonder. Oh, wonder. Your catalyst. Your alchemist. Your talisman. Your telescope. Your worm gig. Your wishbone. Your power dive. Your parachute. Your up and about. Your wanting out. Your zingy dingbat. My fiddly. Twiddle stick. <laughs> that wonder. That wonderer. That sidewinder. That spellbinder. My chariot. Your chimney. My harlequin. Your hyacinth. My parsnip. Your percolator. My spark plug. Your pressure. Tucker. <laughs> this wonder. This wonderful. This pitchfork. This plumb line. This bagpipe. This trombone. This home run. This touchdown. This noble savage. This undercover. Agent. This strip squeeze. This, if you please. This twingy ginger jangle. This rammy cackle. Juggler. Your shillelagh. My ukulele. Your yardstick. My, my niblick. Your cucumber. My can opener. Your skewer. My screwdriver. Your bullet. My blowtorch. Your goo doodle diddle dad. My abracadabra. Rattlesnake. <laughs> this wonder. This wonder kit. This tingle twick. This tickle nip. <laughs> this ditch itch. This finger. Switch. This thistle paw. This wiggle claw. This lollipopper. This pile driver. This horn swaggler. This cornucopia. This sizzly wang dilly. This whiz bang. Whistle bag. This wonder. This wonder work. This jackknife. This jump start. This rocket pad. This meteor. This nose cone. This comet. Tail. This bomb sight. This boomstick. This boing boing boomerang. This ding dong bongo. Bongo. Your wonder. And my wonder. From wonder. To into wonder. Unfolding. Exploding. All forms. All formations. All mine. All hours. All ways. All the way. This wonder. This wonder. This wonder. This wonder. This wonder. This wonder. Oh. And now, here to offer some poet's magic about James Broughton is poet magician Thomas H. Pruxma. And if you like what you see tonight, you can see Thomas' full-length show titled By Heart, The Poet's Magic of Memory on Sunday, March 23rd at the Open Space. Thomas Pruxma. Thank you. Life often presents itself to us in apparent chaos and paradox, seemingly as random as a hand of playing cards. And at times, things don't quite fit. The colors don't match. Everything feels divided. Even when things seem at first well-matched, 
they turn out to be not quite right. All of this can be deeply dispiriting, especially for a poet, a sensitive young poet, who yearns to see what is beautiful and whole. James Broughton not only was a seeker of this sort, but yearned to help others, young and old alike. <laughs> Is that you, James? <laughs> Thank you for your help. Uh, help young and old alike in search. <laughs> uh, in search of that order and magic which comes from word and image poised to awaken. As he sought to do in this poem entitled, The Word for No is Yes, Letter to a Young Poet Contemplating Suicide. Is there any way we can get the faint <laughs> music to go down? Okay. Ah, letter to a young poet contemplating suicide. The word for no is yes. I know a boy whose heart trembles, troubles, and tricks him. Who leans over uncertain waters, questioning his reflection whose long achings fill the night with ungraspable stars, who tethers his fawn at a sheltered bed of thistle and thorn, unleashing that fawn fitfully, fearful of what does not dream. I know a boy whose heart startles, stirs, and strangles him. But there is a place where, believe me, heart and mind meet. There is a place where the bloodstream and spirit embrace. There is a place at the source of the lonely fountain where the marriage of fire and water liberates the event. In the realm of the fiercest oppositions, believe me, the word for Noah's yes and the star and the fawn are one. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the adventures of James Broughton. And here to lead us into their surprises is the filmmaker himself, Stephen Silla. How many years have we waited for this moment? <laughs> so many. So many people in this audience have been so involved in supporting, helping this film in so many ways. So I'm kind of beside myself. But um, I wanted to show you um, this cape. Because it actually appears in the film, but you don't get to see it in all of its splendor. And this, this is the cape that James Broughton wore in his uh, funeral parade 25 years before he died. Uh, when he went back to Modesto to de dedicate the new library. And um, his students carried him on their back wearing this robe. He then went and danced on the grave of his ancestors. And you will see it in the film, but honestly, it's kind of dark. Um, I met James Broughton. You've just, this is so exciting to be able to introduce you to James Broughton in kind of my own weird way. 
Um, I met him when he was 75, and we were assigned to the same cabin at a gathering at Brighton Bush Hot Springs. And I said, I want to be this lively when I'm 75. And fortunately, we became friends. He became a mentor to me. And uh, when he died in 1999, I said to his partner, Joel, I want to do something to bring James's work back into the world, because by that time, most of his books were out of print. His 23 films weren't being seen. He wrote 23 books, 23 films. And uh, so I thought I would write a book since I'm a writer, but then I realized that it really had to be a film to be able to tell the story in the best way. So I don't really want to say much more about it except um, special thanks to Aimé Cartier who has associate produced this film. You'll see many of your names in this, on the credits of this film because many of you have supported it in various ways. Um, but Aimé has kind of been with me through the whole thing. Um, and also Gordon Barnett, <laughs> my amazing partner, the bell maker, who actually has made two different bells with James Broughton poems inscribed on them, of which this is one. So uh, please turn off your cell phones, and as my co-director Eric Slade says, just let the film wash over you. Let you take it. Let it take you on a journey. It's just 82 minutes, so it's not going to be a whole hour and a half. And I think um, I will be here afterwards if you have any questions or comments. Tell we had a good time making it. <laughs> it was hard to choose from all of the amazing footage and interviews. We interviewed 37 people. We only used about 20 of the interviews. But um, I, I just have to acknowledge again my fabulous co-director Eric Slade, who lives in Portland, and uh, Don Logston in San Francisco, uh, who edited and, and co-directed. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take questions or comments or whatever. Yes? Are you, um, have you thought about like, having his films re-released? Actually, have we thought about having his films re-released? Yes, you can actually get, uh, there's a three DVD set of his films put up by Facets of which we have a few for sale out in the lobby. Um, but that's only 16 of his 23 films. So we're, we are actually giving thought to both uh, re-releasing his films, thanks to Joel Singer, who's giving us you know, the rights to, to all of his poetry and film. Um, and we're also working on republishing a bunch of his books. And the first one we're doing is one called Seeing the Light uh, or Making Light of It. It came out in two different editions, but it's a it's a uh, handbook on making film. He used it as a kind of, it's really a textbook on living a creative life disguised as a, as a film textbook. <laughs> and there's, if you go to our website, there's actually a free download of Seeing the Light, the original version, uh, right now at bigjoy.org. So we've always seen it as a multimedia project. We're working on putting together a DVD with all kinds of deleted scenes and extras, and uh, also making our interviews available. Um, Georgia State University has offered to put them all up online. So I'm learning Final Cut Pro so that I can actually edit them into reasonable lengths and uh, put them up sometime in the next year. Yes? Where can you film be seen now? My film actually won't be officially released until March 21st in New York City, where it, after which it will uh, hopefully be available on DVD and video on demand and be widely seeable. 
But I do have a few copies of it that I'm willing to uh, sell today for $25 if anybody wants one. <laughs> Yes. Yes, Stephen, what was the motif of the stains spreading on the, the parchment? Yeah, that was in, in his journals. Um, that was an idea that our animator, Michael Mann from Vancouver, BC, came up with. Um, and if you notice, the stains got kind of more and more red when he was either in love with Kermit or Joel. Um, so it, it there kind of represents the heart and blood. Um, but we were just looking for a way to animate his journals that showed, that, that allowed the viewer to get into the words um, and also to get into the emotions. And that, that was really Michael's genius. Yes? Several people, including the daughters, declined to be part of the film. Why do you think, because that's why she was obviously still quite distraught, why do you think she cannot give it quite a she gave a great, great interview. Yeah, it was actually the first interview we did. And all three of us, Eric and Ian Hinkle, the cinematographer, and I just looked at each other and went, oh my gosh, this, this interview is incredible. Um, Serena, the daughter, the, the daughter of James and Susanna, actually told me that she didn't want to be interviewed because her grandmother told her, if you can't say something nice about anybody, don't say anything at all. <laughs> um, she, she told me that she thought that he looked at her and her brother as kind of trophies. Uh, but she also said that his filmmaking class that she audited at the San Francisco Art Institute was the educational highlight of her life. And it was she who got her mother to agree to the interview. And she coached me and said, Make her feel like a star, because because she wants to feel like a star. It's that thespian in her. So I think that's why she agreed, and and it did take. She actually was kind of uh, pre Alzheimer's when we did the interview, and it wasn't until I showed her the program from the wedding that she had calligraphed, and asked her to read the poem that he wrote for her, that her memory came flooding back, and so we were so fortunate to be able to actually get what turned out to be a very coherent interview. The first few questions she just kept saying, I don't remember. So um, that, that was interesting. And then her other, the, the other daughter that he had with Pauline Kael, Gina James, um, told me that she couldn't wait to see the film because she didn't really know her father. She didn't really meet him until she was 11 and saw him very little. So, okay. I just want to thank you. Um, as you know, James, I was a student, and yes, I know the astrology thing and the chanting. Kay was in his class at, was it San Francisco Art, Art Institute? Yeah. It's so, so wonderful. And you know, I just remember when John and I died, I had just, you know, I had just walked out of the cemetery, which Ken said I had to leave with him. And that's when I learned to and so did James. He would often start with just a blank page. And when, you, when we went to his archive at Kent State, uh, he, he didn't throw anything away, which is great for people who are interested in his work. Because you can see the file for the film, The Bed. It just starts out with these little pieces of paper with single words like container and love and uh, bouncing. And, <laughs> and obviously, that film was uh, his most famous. <laughs> okay, thanks for being here. Yes, we met at a radical fairy gathering at Brighton Bush uh, Hot Springs in 1989. And so that was exactly 10 years before he died. And so I, I really only knew him for 10 years. But when I started researching what I first thought was going to be a book and ended up being a film, um, I realized there was so much about his life that I didn't know. 
So it's it's been a dream of ours since we started the project to be able to show it at this theater. So honestly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> selling for three dollars of all the poems in the film and so if you are interested in what you heard you can get not only the stanzas that are in the film but the other parts of the poem that didn't make it into the film so it's kind of fun thanks again thank you to uh, i want to again thank the vashon film society for making this happen uh, i want to thank yeah, I want to thank the Vashon Theater for making this happen. Uh, I want to thank Gene Doherty and Bill Wood for the amazing reading of this wonder. That was extraordinary. Tom Fuchsma for the magical poem. Uh, ben Jacobson for the improvisational music and all of you for being here. All I did was stand here. Well, we brought, we brought the lights, <laughs> like that. I may be infecting the whole body, said the head, but they'll never amputate me. <laughs>